Good morning, fellas. Uh, we have a, a topic. Triple B introduced this to me. You know, uh, he, shun, he sent us a podcast and uh, God shout out to Jay, Jay Jones. We're talking about platforms and, you know, you over there at high school, at Riverdale High School, and you build a platform for yourself. But before we get into that, I want you to briefly, you know what I'm saying, tell our viewers, you know what I'm saying, who is James Delgado? How did you get to where you are at right now? You know what I'm saying? And you know, what's going on in your life right now, bro? Well, I appreciate y'all having me. It's a pleasure to join you. Uh, yes, I, yes. Tune, I tune in often and, and love what y'all do uh, far beyond yes. the show, but in the community. So I grew up in Florida. You know, I grew up in Apopka and, um, you know, football is everything there. We were fortunate, you know, in my junior year, we won a state championship. We beat Miami Northwestern. Uh, the first championship in school history, the first state championship in in Central Florida. So after four years of playing and doing everything that I could as a player, I got the opportunity to to become a graduate assistant, and immediately I fell in love with coaching. You know, I, I originally was a finance major. I thought I wanted to help people, and maybe financially I could do that. But as soon as I started coaching, I realized this is this is what I'm meant to be doing. This is my calling. This is my ministry, and so. You know, every day I wake up and I and I go to, to work loving what I do. And so after I was done uh, coaching in college, I, I knew I wanted to marry the girl that I'm currently married to now. And I said, I better make some money. So I started teaching and coaching high school football. I went to Osceola in Kissimmee. We had great success there. And eventually I went back to Apopka. And uh, while I was there, we won two more state championships, um, one against uh, Miami Columbus and the other one against Cypress Bay and we lost in a third one that we played in against South Dade um, and and that loss haunts me all the time but after being there for about six years I knew God was telling me calling me to just go do all the good we were doing there somewhere else my wife's originally from this area we were near my family uh, for six years and I said you know what if we move down there to southwest Florida and uh, be near your family. My wife was not a fan of that. Um, she loved Central Florida, loved where we were living, loved the people we were with there. Um, but she uh, eventually, you know, agreed. And, and I interviewed at Riverdale. It was the only place I interviewed at and fell in love with the place, fell in love with the people. I saw a lot of similarities in Riverdale uh, to Apopka, especially when I was in school. It was like going back in time in some ways. And so that's what brought us down here. And ever since, all I've been trying to do is make a difference with the kids that I get to work with on a daily basis. And so it's been a tremendous blessing, man. I've, I've enjoyed every bit of it. You came in, you know, first year and, you know, a program that, you know what I'm saying, has been up and down because Riverdale has history. We're not going to sit up here and act like Riverdale has been a slouch this whole life. This, Riverdale has some rich, rich, rich history. And, you know, so it was standards there. You came in, you know, you 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 work your magic, you did your thing, but then the ten and zero season, you feel me? Phenomenal season, you know. You got the guy to break up, the, the, to, to buy into, you know what I'm saying? The culture. How did you create or utilize that platform to build that program that Riverdale gave you? So, I think coming into Riverdale, like you said, there'd been there'd been history of success in glimpses, but like small glimpses. And there'd always been talent, but for whatever reason, talent would come through the building and then transfer out and go to other places. And so the first thing I said was, well, we've got to change that. We've got to make it so good here that once you're here, the real ones will never quit and they'll never transfer. And that's what we were able to do right away. The guys were hungry for change. They were desperate to do things in a way that that was going to lead to championship culture. And and the first thing I said was just like Bo Schembechler at, at Michigan, it was those who stay will be champions. And that's been our slogan. It stays our slogan. Um, and it's way more than just district championships or regional championships or state championships. We're building men. We're building champions in life. And I think that in doing that, and, and really just saying, you know what, this is the standard. We're not going to back down from it. You're going to either meet it or you're going to figure out that maybe that this ain't really for you. 
you know, the platform given, it's always been and it's always going to be building men. It's always going to be building champions for life. Like we're, we're about, let's face it, fellas, like if we played, you know, you play four years, six years, eight years, maybe if you were, you know, Pop Warner Phenom and you played for 10 years, but you go off to the NFL, you know, the average lifespan in the, in the, in the league is, is three years. So yeah. you're talking about building, preparing life. Like you're, these cats, football is going to come to an end. And when it does, it's, it's all the things that you do to build up to it. It's, it's futile. You know, if you're not teaching them how to be men, if you're not teaching them how to be better fathers, better husbands, better employees one day that we're failing as coaches.